Hello friends and thank you for visiting tutorials and tips. Now if you're an existing viewer, uh, maybe you are first time here. Well, I thank you both for investing some time in learning new technology because that's what I'm doing. I'm learning new technology and I'm sharing that with you as I go from start to finish. Today's topic, who can guess? Well, you're right. Today we're going to talk about how I lab a new technology that I'm learning. For example, life has changed since my last video and I have switched to Silver Peak, uh, who was bought by Aruba last year. And um, so I had to rapidly learn the Silver Peak SD WAN technology. I have um, really exist used my existing ESXi server and I received the server from my work and I bought another one so I'm really cooking three ESXi server to learn this new technology so I wanted to share that information that how I lab a whole new technology just to simulate a multi region a multi office infrastructure including Active Directory including LAN side router including WAN side simulating router including service provider simulating router all of that in there I'm just going to give you an overview of how I make that happen using my VMware ESXi host so stay tuned video on ESXi lab well for some this is a very basic stuff my goal is not to teach an expert my goal is to teach those people that are really coming into learning a new technology but do not know how to simulate it like an example uh, take install a bunch of VMs uh, for example a router image or maybe Windows Server image or Ubuntu Linux image you group those and you use VLAN tagging and you and you uh, simulate them like an uh, office you rinse and repeat now you have two office then you connect them the routers together use dynamic routing protocol like BGP OSPF and now you have traffic flowing from two different groups of devices just like it would happen in the two different offices as simple as that let's look at a simple layer 2 switch and how that VLAN and uh, data packet forwarding happens. So uh, the black color, red color, and the green, they're all representation of different VLANs. For example, um, when you're configuring in a, in a real life world switches, you are configuring your VLANs here. Uh, you do not configure VLANs on your device. You configure them on the switch ports. For example, um, uh, this is VLAN 10 and you have um, uh, red is VLAN 11 and also we have VLAN uh, 12. That's what you configure the ports. Um, what happened now, this particular computer wants to send traffic. You do not configure the VLAN on the actual device, on the client, you configure it on the port. And when that payload, when the data packet re uh, reaches to the port, the switch adds that particular VLAN tag on the payload. Well, then it follows up with the destination lookup, MAC address and ARP and all that process uh, follows through. If the destination MAC within the same uh, switch and it's in the MAC table, the switch forwards the packet to a particular port um, and then strip that VLAN tag and sends the tag free packets to the destination device let's put those two together all right so i'm going to create a site um, i'm going to name it denver and you will see that i will create a port group and i'm going to allow all tagged vlan and that would be part of my v switch zero um, then what i will do i will create um, a router on a stick um, let me draw something here it's called my vm net all right so router on uh, i will create a csr 1000 vm which comes with three default uh, gigabit ethernet for its port and i will 
port one would be for my management by default dhcp um, is enabled on that one uh, so you know i can get a ip address from my local lan so i can manage that device outside of the vm vm infrastructure well then um the port two i can configure that with um a wan device which is a silver peak edge connect for me um goal is to connect this denver office to my data center or my other headquarters right so anyways that's my when port one is my management port two is my when and port three would be my land side uh, this particular device will act as a router on a stick and it is going to carry uh, other VLANs. It will carry uh, sub interfaces with red VLAN. It will also carry sub interfaces for green VLAN. I mean, it will become the gateway for those VLANs. Follow so far. Uh, in those sub interface, that's pretty much router on a stick. Again, um, you will have IP address and then you will have the tagged information. All right, moving on. Next thing you know, uh, you have a server. You install the VM. May that be Windows Server, uh, Ubuntu, CentOS, any any of those. Uh, we, we all know that we cannot configure VLANs here, pretty sure. So what we do, we're going to go in. Um, we are going to create multiple NIC. One will connect to management. So it receives an IP by default and we can RDP or a remote access this device from our network uh, for further, uh, you know, configurations. Anyway, then then what we do, we connect NIC2 uh, to this Denver switch. All right. And then we go into the properties of the NIC2 and we say, you know what, receive VLAN 10 or VLAN 20 or VLAN 30, uh, whatever you configure into that NICS property and VLAN ID, it's in the band section, I'll show you, um, what bec that becomes, that uh, server becomes in that VLAN. Any traffic it sends to the port group will be tagged and then if it needs to go uh, beyond uh, this particular Denver office, then it will uh, ARP it it will go to its gateway and then use the WAN to go out. That's the uh, picture. Let me show you exactly how I'm doing it. I will go ahead and configure an ESCSR 1000 from scratch. I'll install a Windows server and I will just show you that they can communicate to each other. If you do not have any routing configured, they cannot go anything beyond that. Okay, so you can see that this is my main ESXi box and I have a whole lot of um, port groups created. And they're all part of this vSwitch0. Don't worry, I will walk you through creating one. Um, and then what happens? Um, why do I have that many? By default, you only have this VM network out of the box when you install ESXi for the first time along with the vSuite 0. So what I have, I have created the specific port groups just to simulate each office, right? Uh, London here and Chicago, and I configured to allow all tagged VLAN. So I do not specify VLAN. I do not create VLAN just like you do it on the switch. I, What I do, I install the VM and then I make the VM, tag the traffic, send it to my vSwitch and then destination lookup and routing happens just like the normal um, real world switching and routing infrastructure. Um, so once again, you do not configure switch VLAN, a port VLANs, you just configure to allow all tagging and then use your VM clients to tag traffic within itself. Let's quickly create a port group. You log into your ESXi web client or uh, your hard client, then you go to your networking, and here's the option to um, port group. To add a V switch, you go to virtual switch and you add the V switch. Okay, all right. So add a port group, simply give it a name. This is going to be my Denver office. Um, and um, this is the VLAN ID section is where you specify whether it is going to be um, switch, simple switch, unmanaged switch, which uh, takes untagged VLAN only, and then it or it could take just a specific VLAN. Mean any VM attached to this port group can only send traffic with the tagged VLAN 10. If it sends anything else, it will get discarded. 
but if you want a bunch of those VMs that is part of this Denver port group can send their own tagged VLAN traffic, then you need to set, set it to all, allow all, which is 4095. Virtual switch section here, we switch zero, uh, will let you connect uh, to a device, to any other VLAN outside this ESXi box. So as simple as that. All right, it's Denver is added. Let's go ahead and um, install the you know, CSR1000, that is a virtual Cisco router. I'm going to install that to simulate the landside router with um, router on a stick. Let's go ahead and do it. Well, for some reason, it doesn't allow uh, to let me and let me import it from um, the the web client. So I'm going to use my hard client here. All right, CSR 1000. Next step, I'm just going to mute myself and let you listen to some beautiful music while I build this in a fast forward state. installed VMware tools. Um, I installed two NICs onto this De Denver DC4. Uh, number one, uh, none of them I have configured any VLANs as you cannot. So both received the untagged traffic from my VLAN 15 LAN side of my router. But uh, Ethernet 1, remember, that's supposed to be the Denver network. So I'm going to go to Properties, go to Configure, and I wanted to show you this is the VMXNet 3. Uh, okay, go to Configure, go to Advanced, and first of all, you need to make sure that the VLAN and the priority is configured. Right here, uh, this is either Enable, uh, only one of them Enable or Disable. So I have them Enable. Now if you scroll down bottom, right here you have a VLAN ID. You specify here. I'm going to say my router is on VLAN ID 80. 
and sending traffic. So I'm going to make this VM part of VLAN 80. What that, what that means that it's going to send the traffic with VLAN 80 tagged already in the data packet in a frame. So we don't have a DHCP server configured. So let's go ahead and manually set IP on this port. Okay, while you add it, make sure you disable your firewall. I know this is not a good idea, but this is to allow you to respond to ping if this particular device wants to ping it. All right, so far, do show arc. 15.1 is 73 Bravo 3. That's the last four. Let's double check it. Seven three Bravo three is that true? Seven three Bravo three. So we see that both Denver router can communicate with Denver server, and so this is the land side, and so far I think this is a good place for me to stop before the video becomes very big. All right, so all good. I'm going to stop here. Just wanted to say thank you for staying with me all this way. We have the land side of the Denver created. All we need to do, uh, we need to create um, a WAN side router. Could be that particular Denver router or could be another router, which would then connect it to, uh, which will then be connected to um, ISP simulating router. All of that will be coming in upcoming videos but for now i want to say thank you for sticking with me so long and if you like this video and want to support this channel please like and share this content subscribe to my channel i would greatly appreciate that until then take care and see you next time